what do we have here? Specialized Dolce Elite. This looks actually pretty good, but after all being said and done, we will see what this will cost you. Because there is going to be some hidden costs that will need to be addressed after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. I'm taking scary how to use bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging with the guy. Hey, I'm Justin the guy on this old bike series. This is what, what is it going to cost you if you bought this yourself? and how to take it to a bike shop to have it looked over to make sure it's safe to ride and what kind of estimate they would provide you with this particular bike. So these are gonna be like little tidbits and tricks to look for, which I have a videos of the top five and the top 20 to kind of go over those what you're looking for when you're looking to buy used. And this can carry over not just for road bikes, but mountains, hybrids, and kids' bikes alike. So without further ado, let's dive into this guy. So Specialized Elite, we're looking at, it's a, I'd say like early, mid-2000s, aluminum frame, it has decent Alex wheels, they're nice and silver. Um, we have a, a nine speed back drivetrain with a triple up front, which gives you a variety of gears. So this is actually a good find for somebody that's into just starting off into road riding and going forward from there. But let's just take a look though, because this does look like a very immaculate bike and the pictures look really good when I purchased it off of, um, this was when I got off of Facebook Marketplace and it was from original owners and I actually bought two other bikes from them too. They had a road bike as well as a mountain bike, which I usually don't do mountain bikes, but I figured I had some extra parts and they were kind of like, ah, we just need to make some room. I'm like, okay. Uh, but anywho, back to this bike here. It looks really pristine in the sense, hardly any uh, scratches or dings. So the frame, I know I'm gonna really be able to bring to life with the polishing techniques that I do. And, and when I did the initial inspection, it wasn't really anything to find per se when I was out in the field. But as we all know, there's one thing of being in the field and picking up a bike then actually bringing it back and tearing into it. So if you got yourself a bike and you're like, oh, it's not shifting quite right or whatever the case may be, most likely you'll have to take it to a bike shop to have it worked on. Reason being, I would say about close to 85 to 90% of the bikes I buy definitely need a tune up right out of the gate. Um, this one may not seem the case, but it's one of those things you would probably take it for a couple spins and be like, oh, it's not quite shifting right and that kind of thing. But with this particular vintage bike, I'm going to show you, there's a couple things you gotta look out for. So, so when you are looking for a used bike, uh, number one, size. So let's make sure you get the right size and investigate the, the brand and the model and go to geometrygeeks.com to kind of cross-reference and go to the actual brand's website. In this case, would be Specialized. See what their size charts are. A couple of Google searches will save you a lot of heartache if you, when you purchase, if you accidentally purchase the wrong bike. This does happen. Uh, believe it or not, there's several bikes I have purchased from people that, you know, I'm buying them off of them because it wasn't the right size bike for them. So they never really got into it. This could be road, mountain, or whatever. You want to make sure. So when you're in the field, you want to double check the frame and fork because that's the most expensive lift. If there's something damaged with the frame that's unrepairable or it's not safe to ride, you basically have a box of parts. So you want to inspect that. But for, to, for me to get into the frame and details, I got to take all the parts off to really inspect it. They don't really do this in the service manager or the service <coughs> when you're looking at getting a, a quote from a shop, but they do sometimes notice if you, they'll take the wheels off to inspect the hubs and kind of expect the shifting and some using some measurement tools to uh, identify if there's any issues that need to be addressed. <coughs> so first and foremost, we're going to dive into the front wheel and uh, see if the hub is not loose. You want smooth, but not grinding and not too tight. No knocking, that kind of thing. That seems to be okay. The tires on these are 
they still have like the little ridge nubs still on there. I'm like, ah, oh, they got some new tires on this. The reason I know they're not the original because there's Continentals. This particular Specialized came with Specialized tires. So the tires have been upgraded uh, shortly after they stopped riding it. So that's actually a win. That will save you at least 80 bucks right there. So put that in the win column for sure. Popping the rear wheel off. Ugh. And oh, this one feels a little grindy. So it might be just an adjustment or I might need to replace the bearing. Um, and what, you know, you can kind of feel this resonate through the frame too when you spin it, like kind of an extra vibration. Uh, so that's something I'm gonna take a look at. And the cassette looks okay, skewer looks okay. And I did check the rims and they seem to be all right. So overhaul the hub is usually sometimes extra thing versus the standard tune-up. So sometimes they'll upcharge you another 15 or 20 bucks just for that. And then if it needs cones and bearings, that's going to be additional costs as well. So on all these bikes, you definitely want to chain, check the chain. And on this guy, oh, oh boy, look at that. We're at almost a one, we're at 0 0.10. This is stretched over past 0 0.5 to 0 0.1. So usually they recommend it on the chart on here even, it says 0 0.75 to replace. So this is beyond that, huh? So if it's beyond that, how long it was ridden longer and has it damaged the teeth of the crank set and also the jockey pulleys as well as the cassette. Rule of thumb is two chains replacement to one cassette. So not knowing really the history too well of how many chains have been replaced on this, if any, probably not, probably just been ridden. And probably was one of those individuals that got in one or two gears and just went. And that would put the strain. They don't do a lot of shifting that's going to wear out those particular cogs. So you're not going to really know until you get a new chain on there and really stand up on those one or two cogs that have been used more to see if they skip. But since the immaculateness of this bike so far is just a little dirty, a good chance that the cassette's fine. But we're going to note that since it's that stretched that far, I'm going to put it at as an estimate. So we're looking at at least, I don't know, 25 for the chain and the cassette itself is going to run you about 50 bucks. So. so right now we're probably looking at, uh, what would it be? Overall hub and the cassette and chain. Let's say we're running about a hundred bucks right now, just in parts, um, that kind of thing. So. Uh, let's pop this chain off. I don't think it has a power link or a quick link, so I just have to drive a pin out. Yep, there's the old original pin. So yeah, it kind of shocked me that on this bike, the chain was stretched considering how minimal use it looked like it had on it, but it was definitely stretched out. So they apparently took really well care of it, but um, which is good and from scratches and dings and trat and transferring and all that. So I'm going to keep the chain separate there and, uh, we'll measure that with a new chain. Um, I'm going to replace all the cables and the housing on this. Also, this particular vintage of cable and housing, the lighter gray, this didn't hold up very well in sun. So after a period of time, it, it split and blow out. I'm going to replace all of this because it's, well, I typically do anyway, but even though it may have not been used that much, it's going to eventually fail uh, sooner than later. So it's better off to have all new cables and housing on there. And it's just one of those things that the UV breaks down colored housing more than, more so than black and white housing. And it seems like they're built a little bit differently. Oh, that's kind of binded. Oh, it's because of the donuts. So I'm going to keep all these little extra bits here. Also on the back, there was a little chunk taken out of the housing, which probably would have been, well, that was gonna eventually blow out. Let's see if, oh, okay, there we go. Let's see how that kind of, the, the spiral of the inside cabling starting to kind of poke through. This will compromise your shifting. So it's not gonna shift very smooth for you. So definitely want to get rid of that, replace it with fresh and new. I'll give the opportunity for the drivetrain to work at its best performance out of the gate. And uh, 
and looking at the drailers, just you know, regular little dirt, nothing really too overly concerning per se. But we will definitely dive into this more. So adding cables and housing is gonna be for the kits and so forth, probably for the good stuff, it's around about 40 bucks for the brakes and housing. So we're putting us at about 140 for parts. Well, let's say 120, because that labor addition is going to be added to the, the actual um, tune-up portion of it for that rear hub. And let's take these bottle cages off. I like taking bottle check the bottle mounts because you never know that these cages could be compromised, and then you have a host of an issue of cutting them out and re-riveting in a new mount. It is possible to be done. The frame is not toast, but it is an added lift if you do have to have that done. So we'll just cross our fingers. The down tube one seems to be fine. That's usually the one that does get damaged if there's any damage due to the fact that um, that's the one that gets used the most. Oh, it's a different size. I don't know the other one. Typically they match, but it is a different size. Makes your question. And um, also the band clamp here, you have to have a special cage to uh, go over that, or you bump it out with um, the cheap trick is taking the eyelet um, from your tubes. These little grommet deals that tie down, you can put that as spacers and um, that way they can bump that cage out so it doesn't fold up or go around that band clamp of the shifter. So they use the proper ones here and it has track so this came from a dealer that carried Specialized and Trek, or they went to a dealer afterwards and Trek. I know this actually were bought at um, Lee Cyclery. There's a talk to the owners. And um, I was working at Lee Cyclery when there was new. So it was most likely at some point, I could have been one of the many employees there at the time that actually uh, built this and maintained it. So that's what we got going on there. Oop. I just got the drop seats today. There we go. It happens. All righty, looking at the brakes, the pads look pretty good. So there's still plenty of material there. So that's a good sign. And um, there, there is caked up like kind of dust dirt. So putting this in the ultrasonic cleaner will clean out all these little pivot areas and it makes the brakes perform a little bit better. Um, and that's just a good thing to do right out of the gate. And we will do the front. Oh, I see a little bit of dust coming out of the back. Into that guy. <laughs> Dirt. <laughs> and you got the squeakiness of like a training wheel. <laughs> ah. So this one's missing its front spacer. It might be okay because it's blocked out. Oh. Again, with the drops. Oh, oh, here I am. Now that guy there. Onto the front derailleur. As I'm taking this stuff off, I'm giving it a good, good look -see. If there's anything that's glaring of an issue. Um, so far, except for the chain. Oh yeah, the chain, cassette. Yeah, what we said, about 140, 120-ish. And the chain rings, these have still their, um, still have like their flat tops ramping to them. So I think we'll be okay on this guy for re refurbishing. I don't think it's gonna be an issue with a new chain on there. So, and it doesn't look like they used either or chain ring more so than the other. Although the middle chain ring does look a little more dirty, but that doesn't really indicate very much. Just all depends what they used as a lubricant 
to lube their chain. Pop this guy off the non-drive side crank arm. That slid right off. Pretty dry. I mean, there's like no added grease in there. So that's something to make sure there's properly lubed. Uh, oh, there's the little blue gasket thing. Clean that. There's that's the ramping. So the smaller ring will have more of a rounder edge to it than the middle and the top one will have a different variations of sizes that helps the chain to go up and down. When these first came out, people thought they're worn out already. It's like, no, well, they're no, they're not. They're designed to ramp up that chain so you'll have low and high points through the course of the uh, teeth there. And the reason being for that, it helps for the teeth to go up and down. Um, kind of when they backtracked from BioPace back in the 90s, they started doing that. So, um, and now BioPace is back. The oval ring, mostly for a mountain bike, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Oh, the bearings feel pretty good, so that's a good win. I'm going to take this guide off in the bottom. That's where a lot of dirt and grime collect and track through the cable. And so you want this plate to be really clean, and I put a light lube on them too. So, okay, we're out of position here. Bar tape will need to be replaced too. Seat looks okay, but that might be something that will need to be replaced too. So between the bar tape and the saddle, you're probably looking at 160 to 180-ish on that. So let's just take a quick peek of the frame. Wipe it down. I use a purple power diluted half and half with water. I mean, you can use straight purple power, but always use gloves with this kind of stuff. You don't want it to eat your skin off. And then I inspect one tubing at a time. The rag itself kind of helps me determine if there's anything of a burr sticking out. Um, it catches, especially if it's a carbon fiber frame, but this is not, this is an aluminum frame. So I'm looking for uh, chips and cracks on this, but this frame did look pretty, pretty stellar, but that doesn't mean there isn't a hidden, I mean, the chain itself was kind of a, a shocker. So let's hope not, hope there's not another shocker bit to this bike. Ball cage mounts look good. That's a good sign. Pretty blue. Looking at the light and the angling, making sure there's no massive dings to this guy. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to match the bar tape to silver. Usually just do standard black. So, and you know, that's kind of a, a personal touch. Later on, if you wanted to add a different bar tape or type of bar tape or a color, you can without too terrible expensive lift. And there's different types of bar tapes too that are more comfortable or have padding to them, that kind of thing. And double check here, the down tube. This side is looking pretty good. I'll have to measure this out. It doesn't have a frame sticker, so I'll have to measure it out to see what size it is. And I'll be using geometrygeeks.com to kind of cross-reference that as well as the spec sheets that specialize. All right. And one last but not least is the underbelly of the bike. So this is where the road grime and chips happen. And that's where the caked up dirtiness from around the cable plate and this will have your serial number, and that's intact. Um, I wouldn't recommend buying a bike that didn't have a serial number. Bottom of the seat stays look good. Bottom of the chain stays look good. And this is where the car racks usually chew up bikes, and it doesn't look like they ever used a car rack on this guy, at least at that part, that hang. So, all right. I think we got ourselves a, a winner, frame and fork anyway. Rear hub, chain of cassette, K2 
cables, housing, bar tape, pedals. Oh yeah, pedals. Um, how will we replace? So I would say at least we're looking about $200 in parts. And a tune-up to have this done to do the hub and replace the cables and housing, depending on what neck of the woods you're at. Uh, that could run you anywhere between 150 to 250, depends on the specials. If you get something like this, you can wait to the off season. A lot of bike shops will have 55, 50 bucks off or something of that nature of um, tune-ups. So if it's something you're just gonna hold for a little while, have it done later, you can save a little money there. Uh, so, but if it's off season, they may have those promotions in January and February in addition to bring that price down. But let's just say on average it's about 200 bucks with the, all the labor. So we are into this bike around 400. Um, time that you put into this, you know, these typically bikes, what I've been purchasing lately are around, you know, 150, 100, 150 to 200, 250 if it has like carbon stuff on there. So let's say this was like a $200 bike because it looked pretty good. I mean, I'm sure it shifted fairly well, okay. It has newer tires, so that saves you some money, but it had some other issues like the chain cassette and the hub, that's the unknown that <laughs> you have to look into. Um, it doesn't feel too grindy, but if it gets really grindy, it could be some parts. It could also be the rear wheel, but we won't add that until we really actually dive into that. But that would be a, a, a pro a area of concern on this particular one, even though how, look, how good it looked. So 400 bucks for parts and labor, and you add another 200, that's 600 bucks. 599-ish for a bike. Um, for 27 speeds, and it does have Altegra Mix uh, 105, I believe, componentry, and um, yeah, 105 shifters. That's, that's stellar, because when you're looking at new, 1500 to 2000, that's the bottom end of the new bikes, which is the aluminum frame. Even if you found one that was 1000, it still would have the bottom line componentry, and um, it probably a little heavier aluminum frame and it won't be as nice wheels. So when you're looking at buying this used now polished up and ready to go, that's 600 bucks, you are definitely half price. And with better componentry, like second to third down stage componentry from the top of the line. So that is a win. And this bike will actually go for a long time. It's a workhorse componentry, workhorse frame. It's the Dolce Elite, which is a women's specific, so it'll have women's specific saddle, bars, and um, the shifter brake levers will have a little bit of a, I think they have a little adjustment or a stop to them that you can bring those in. So for somebody with uh, smaller hands, we'll accommodate a little bit better. So um, yeah, there you go. 600 bucks, solid bike. So that's what we would cost you if you were gonna do it yourself. Well, anyway. Check out these awesome pictures and video of the final result after this.